Hey guys, it's Professor Ward with another edition of Wardy Screencast. For this one, we will look at structuring our proposal essay. So now we've done the planning. Now we're going to look at how you structure it. So by the end of this video and this week, you should... All right, we're learning about structures of proposal arguments so we can write winning proposal arguments. Not just a proposal argument, but one that shall win some people over. It's important. You'll know you've got it when... You can list the five parts of a proposal argument. So there are five, count them, one, two, three, four, five parts we're going to go over in a couple minutes. And then write a draft proposal argument, just a draft, um, using your planning sheet. So at the end of this video, I'll kind of go back to your planning sheet and say, hey, here are the five parts. Here's where in the planning sheet. If you've done the work and already had the planning sheet done, which you should, the essay writing should go fairly smoothly. Um, so let's get into it. So we have the five parts, count them five. All right, so number one, you introduce the problem. You let the reader know, here is the problem that we're addressing. And you kind of establish that it is a real issue. Number two, present your, proposed, your proposal, basically. Here's my proposed solution. Remember, it does not have to be the entire problem. It could be one little minute part of it that you're trying to solve. That's going to be your thesis statement. Then you justify, support your proposal with your supporting reasons and really your plan. You include evidence, and here's the key part. Show your thinking. Your voice has to shine through in this. So you're going to point out maybe what other people have done in similar situations. Um, here's why we need to do whatever it is you're going to argue. You have to explain to your reader, here's why it'll work. Here's why it's a great plan. Here's what it addresses. And that's where your voice shines through. And that's where you kind of use the ethos of the credibility that you've built. Pathos, pull at the heartstrings and the emotions. Logos, make sure it's logical. You know, you sometimes you have to connect the dots and show the logic. I'll get into that a little later. Consider the skeptics. There's always a skeptic. Always a skeptic. And finally is really your conclusion. So you're going to call to action. What exactly do you want people to believe at the end of this? Or possibly even do? How can they help you? All right, recycling. What does this have to do with a proposal? I'm glad you asked. So I'm going to look at, and there should be a link in the assignment kind of telling you to watch this video on Blackboard. Um, last week it was optional to look at this sample recycling essay. This week I want to make it, I don't want to say mandatory, but kind of. Um, excuse me, I'm trying to. That's what I want to do. All right. So if we look at this, and you're going to see the five parts in there. So just kind of maybe have this up or at least look at it after this video. So let's go through the five parts and find them in the recycling proposed essay. Yes. Yes. All right. Introduce the problem. What's that really mean? Engage the readers and grab their attention. How do we do that? Anecdotes, statistics, and kind of like, Maybe a background on the problem. So last week in the planning sheet, remember I had you kind of pull up anecdotes that you might use. Ah, I always have a plan for you. So if you've done that, you kind of already have an idea how you're going to start. Um, other things you're going to want to do in the introduction and kind of show who's affected and what's at stake. This is where you're going to grab some audience attention. They might not think this is an issue. And it's like, oh, this would impact me. Here's kind of what we need to, why we need to figure it out. Like, what's at stake? If we don't do this, there's going to be a problem. And then kind of try to show this one might be a little tougher. Um, so sometimes I say it's optional. But if you can kind of show, hey, we have a problem and we can solve it, here's a realistic plan, you might want to kind of allude to that in the introduction. So let's look at the sample recycling essay. Shall we? Yes, we shall. So the beginning of this, they're kind of just giving some background on the problem. Um, I think honestly, the credit card cause causal essay that opened with the anecdote, I kind of like that opening better, but what they do a good job of here is this right here. And I, I like this, I'm giving you this link because one, it's a shorter essay. Um, and two, it has like the little comments in the margin, you know, in class, we do a little bit different, but in the times that we're in 
trying to make it as easy on everybody as we can. So this says essential recycling is necessary is necessary because the amount of resources and energy required to produce new items from scratch. Landfills become too large to accommodate in some areas. They emit unwanted gases. Ooh. Right here we're kind of saying, here's what's at stake in a way. Here's kind of who's uh, the effects of this. Because of the repercussions of waste from this, recycling is essential. Thus, it should be universally available and streamlined for maximum benefits. So they're saying we need to streamline it. That's going to be their plan. Make sure it's available and streamline it. And over here it says, kind of introduces the problem, hints the thesis in the next paragraph. So, they've kind of given background who's affected, what's at stake. It can be solved. And really, what they're saying here is, if we streamline it, we can solve this problem. That's number one. Number two, present your solution. So, state your proposal. This is really your thesis statement. Give an overview of the specifics of your proposal, which will come next. So if I go down here. To solve these problems, Oregon State University should implement. Oh, should implement. Here's what should be done. Here's my proposal. A reorganized system that includes matching bins across campus, blah, 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 blah. You can read the rest of it. Should Here's what should happen. There's my claim. I'm kind of going to say here exactly what they could do. So this is my overview. That simple. I mean, you need to build to it, toward it. But that's kind of the second part. Number three, justify, support your proposed solution. So restate the thesis and supporting reasons. Develop, explain, support each reason with evidence. Show you, and this is the key thing I was saying earlier. Show your thinking. You have to make the connections for the reader. Do not assume that the reader is going to know. Because when you assume, you make out of you and me. If you've never heard that before, it's a good one. It's an oldie but goodie. Don't assume because you make a out of you and me. Anyway, ha ha, moving on. All right, so down here you kind of do get to um, the details of the solution and kind of what should happen. You know, streamline bins will allow staff to do this. A recycling in the library matches a system from Memorial Union. Those on campus will be less likely to toss things in the trash because they're not sure if it's recyclable. In other words, if it's consistent, people will follow it. And they're kind of getting toward arguing that. So they're kind of showing their thinking and the logic here. Throwing a little evidence, what the what it states. Um, then they come back to the university made trash bins harder to access, allowing each faculty. So they kind of explain what all this means. You need to kind of really explain Anything you're trying to get, put it this way. If you want the reader to understand it, put them in your head because the reader is not in your head. Show your thinking. It's like math class. Show your work. Show your thinking. All right. Consider the skeptics. So not everybody's going to agree with you. Somebody's always going to object. And it could be this. Hey, it's a great idea, but it's going to cost a lot of money. So there's two ways that you could kind of respond to it. You can rebut them and say, hey, you have a great point, but you haven't considered this. Hit them with some evidence, your thinking, logic, literally write a rebuttal. The other thing is this. They raise a great point maybe you haven't even thought of, or you can't, you don't have an answer for. That's okay. You can, it actually has your credibility, make concessions. You know, John, that's, that's a great point there, and that's definitely a barrier we're going to have to overcome, and we're going to have to work through that. That's something to keep in mind. That's okay to so make concessions. And then if we look at here, do, 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 do. All right. They start off with critics. Now, I'd like a better transition here, but that's just me. Critics of recycling initiatives often cite wasted energy. So they're pointing out the critics. And again, you can kind of um, just kind of bring them back to the benefits. So this is more of a rebuttal. But I'll let you read through that. The final thing, I'm running a little long here. Summarize your argument and return to the big picture of what's at stake. And then kind of end with this call to action. What do you want people to think or do? So in this case, I'm going to show you something else in a minute. In the end, they say, if you see the need for this change, contact your administrative officials and business affairs and tell them. Now, this is the fish. Now, their audience is probably, because they're writing about on campus. Um 
college students. Great. Keep, this is where you have to keep your audience in mind. Who is it? It could be something as blatant as this. It could be, you know, hope, you know, keep this in mind. Some kind of call to action. The other thing you can do to end it is what we like to call the memorable mic drop. Yes, that's right. I'm not going to drop my mic, but I could. Uh, in fact, I'll leave it to my man, President Obama. Mic drop. All right. I'm going to show you a different essay. This one was on the addiction of social media and Facebook and how people literally get addicted to it. I'm not sharing this whole essay with you because you can see where I'm on page like 12 out of 14. And this is the end of the last two of our references. But anyway, I didn't think you wanted to. If we were in class, we would look at this. Um, I thought 12 was a little too long for online education. So, continuing on. So, this is talking about, again, Facebook addiction is a sickness best treated over time. That's, we need to treat it. That's kind of what their thesis was. If you slip up, it's okay. Just keep trying. Here's your call to action. You got to keep trying. It may be hard, frustrating, but I promise you it's for your own good. So you got to get rid of it. Now they're going to hit you with this memorable last line. You're, if you work toward it, your social skills will sharpen, your personal relationships will strengthen, and your dog will love you for taking him outside. Boom! Mic drop. This last one, thank you for your time. Do not write that. I think it's kind of amateurish. But this thing of... Um, your dog will love you for taking him outside. Ah, oh, I'll get to spend more time with my family, my animals. Boom, mic drop. People, that'll kind of hit the heartstrings maybe a little bit. So that's what we mean by memorable mic drop. So if I come back to this, structure of a proposal argument. So you can write winning arguments. You know you've got it when you can list the five parts. We should be able to do that now. And then write your draft using the planning sheet. And this is where I'm going to come back to your planning sheet. You have your thesis. All right, engaging the audience. Remember we said part one, start with an anecdote, statistics. You've brainstormed these. Pick one that's really great, open it up. Your parts of the plan. You should have like some bullet pointed stuff here of evidence and kind of your thoughts. You have your body paragraphs. Um, call to action, probably kind of look at that. Skeptics. So what I'm telling you is use this. It's broken into the parts you need. So other than that, you should now be prepared to write your draft. Again, it's just a draft. We're going to peer at it uh, early next week. So it should be submitted in peer grade by the end of this. I'm going to say Sunday night, and I realized this year, I realize it's going to be Easter. So you might want to do it on Saturday. Normally, I would not have stuff to do because we'd be in class. Um, but we really can't go anywhere anyway right now. So make sure we get that done. If you have questions, let me know. Other than that, 40 out.